Russian press have been warned about for quite some time about the pattern repeating that every time the Syrian Arab army makes advances against the Western-backed terrorists in Syria, that there is an alleged chemical attack, usually reported by the white helmets or equally dodgy outfits, uh, even outfits that aren't on the ground in Syria, outfits that receive Western funding, outfits like the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights or the uh, Syrian American Medical Association. And this continued on for a few days, mainly communicated in the form of tweets from Trump. Um, kind of the will he, won't he situation fostered by, you know, oh, I said we might strike, we'll make a decision soon. Um, in response to these threats, uh, the Communist Party of Great Britain, Mark Slemnist, called a demonstration outside Parliament uh, for 6pm on Friday. Shortly after that, Stop the War also announced a petition handing in for 5pm outside Parliament on the Friday. Um, we also called uh, demonstrations around the country that actually happened today in Brighton, Bristol, Manchester, Leeds. And what we saw at the demonstration on Friday was a huge variety of people and a very different kind of crowd that normally comes out to these stop war protests. Um, and it was a crowd largely of patriotic Syrians that are living in Britain that know what's going on in Syria. Speaking to all of them, they all understand that these are Western-backed terrorists. They all support the government. They all support the Syrian Arab army. They may have disagreed in the past about policies that the government has pursued. You know, they might not necessarily have liked the way the country was won, might have not thought it was ideal. You know, there's obviously reasons that they've emigrated from the country. But they're all united in the fact that they understand that their country is being torn up by Western-backed imperialist terrorist proxy war. And they are fully supportive of the government, fully supportive of the Syrian Arab army, because they understand a war has two sides. You either want these terrorist forces to win, or you want the Syrian Arab army, led by President Bashar al-Assad, to win. There's no third option, there's no third way. There is no neither Washington nor Damascus. There is no neither Jabhat al-Nusra nor Damascus. And so it's quite clear that the anti-war movement needs to take on a message of defeat to the imperialist forces. It needs to take on a message of victory to the anti-imperialist forces. The anti-imperialist forces, in this instance, represented by the Syrian Arab army, Russia, Iran, and other forces fighting in Syria against these terrorists, against as well, British and American troops that are on the ground, against British, American and French airstrikes, against Israeli airstrikes, they are the ones on the ground fighting against this. And this confuses a lot of people that are confused ideologically. They say, why can't you, you know, support an end to the war without supporting any side? Because the war has two sides. We are not bourgeois pacifists, we are not liberals. Mm. And we understand the class interest in this war. We understand that the Western imperialists are seeking to dominate the Middle East, to destroy any independent country that stands aside from Western imperialists, aside from the influence of Western markets. And I believe it was General Wesley Clark um, from the Pentagon a while ago, ex general, I think now, stated that just after the Iraq war, he was presented with a clear plan that they were going after Iraq, that they were going after Libya, that they were going to go after Iran and then go after Russia and China. That is the clear path to war, that is the clear drive to war that they are on. And it hasn't happened yet because that is an insane suicidal prospect. Going to war with not 
a minor country that has no or little to no support. They are threatening war with a major country, a former superpower that is now regaining its strength, that is now building alliances with these other countries that are realising that they will be next on the hit list. In the post-Cold War world where NATO has rampaged across the world, destroying what were once peaceful, largely socialist countries and communities in their quest to exploit the labour market and the natural resources of these countries. Now people do ask, you know, why can't you support the YPG? Why can't you support these nice, friendly, <coughs> democratic federalists or mm. whatever they're called, or ecological mm. feminists, um, anarchist, socialists, people see whatever they want to see mm. in the YPG. The reality is, you know, the Kurds have had a very bad time. There's no denying that. But you have to look at the historical reasons why and what can be done to solve it. We do not agree that putting nationalism first, that putting an ethno-nationalist state in places where there are other ethnicities living mm. is the right thing to do. Mm. Hello, Israel. And these people no. are not following the principles of proletarian internationalism. No matter how much they might say they are Marxists, um, people claim they are marxist leninists they are not following the principles of international socialism. What they have done is put their nationalism above any other principle. And what they are doing is working with American imperialism, who have now started to pull out and get cold feet because they're coming into clashes with Turkey. And they had 3,000 US special forces embedded within the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, which is military led by the YPG. And about 40% of the makeup is the YPG. And they've been previously supplied by arms and munitions. And as I said, the Americans got cold feet as Turkey invaded. We absolutely condemn the Turkish invasion of Syria. And they're not in there to help out, just as we know that these threats of war against these alleged chemical attacks are not there to help the people of Syria. There has been no instance in the history of Britain, America and France where they have gone to war or acted in the best interests of any other nation or population in the world. We've seen what happened in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya and dozens and dozens of other countries. Afghanistan recently has been convinced to provide the US and US companies with access to 25% of the country's mineral wealth in return for the policing of Afghanistan after the invasion. Pure, blatant colonial plundering. And this is what they want for Libya, this is what they want for Syria, this is what they want for Iran. And ultimately, they want a war with Russia. And the war with Russia is along the same reasoning. The economic crisis of 2008 has not improved and the only way out of this as we've seen in history is by a world war this preceded world war one it preceded world war two the crisis of overproduction means that the productive force of capitalism are actually overwhelmingly good at producing things at making things at lower and lower cost and thus lower and lower profit and we simply have too much stuff and then no one can buy it and people get laid off from jobs and this exacerbates the cycle. And under a capitalist system of production, there is no way out of this. They have no rational solution for it because it's not a planned system, it's an anarchic one. And how they solved it before is by destroying a huge amount of the productive forces of these nations, a huge amount of material and slaughtering a huge amount of people. That's how they recovered from the economic crisis preceding World War I and World War II. And that's the only way that they're going to recover from this one. Our job as socialists is to call for the defeat of our own imperialist forces, because this is what they are driving us towards, and to call for the overthrow of the capitalist economic order in this country 
and internationally and install a socialist system based on rational planning, based on peace and prosperity for everyone, not just a minority of people that control the world and send the rest of us to die for their private profit and gain. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to explain something uh, about the actual attack. So they called it a, a surgical strike or you know, precision strike, uh, a one-time deal. You know, we know it's not a one-time deal. They've been in Syria since the start of this um, revolution that they've backed. And we know they're going to continue meddling in Syria's affairs and trying to attack Syria. Just after these attacks, uh, it was reported that ISIS, or Daesh, or whatever you want to call them, and other militants have uh, risen up and started attacking again. You know, this is after you know, massive defeats over the past few years for these terrorists. Um, and it was actually announced that I think 71 out of the 103 missiles launched by the British, French and American coalition of their latest technology, 71 out of 103 of those missiles were shot down by the Syrian Arab Army air defences. This is using technology from the 1960s and 1970s. Soviet era technology actually, Soviet produced anti-aircraft missiles, obviously since then upgraded. Uh, but, you know, this just really embarrasses the imperialists. $180 million worth of munitions launched. That's just for the missiles alone. Not counting the ships, air bases, aircraft, other support required to launch this attack. And it was scuppered by some old Soviet anti-aircraft equipment. And the response from Russia has been, well, now we're thinking about upgrading the Syrian air defences. Um, this was, the attack was launched not because of Theresa May or Donald Trump wanting to go to war, not even for Emmanuel Macron wanting to go to war, although he was yeah. almost bellicose about it. It is useful to them in some respects. It's damaging in others. Theresa May has a tenuous grasp on, you know, power really in the United <coughs> Kingdom. A tenuous grasp on our office. She's deeply unpopular. She's divided the Conservative Party as well. Um, Trump as well <laughs> faces huge unpopularity from every side. It's a it's a miracle he's president because he doesn't seem to have any fans or supporters. Um, Macron was facing huge amounts of strikes in France. So you can see where this might be a diversionary tactic for them. But the larger picture is that you know, these plans have been put in place, put in motion for the past several years. So it's not about any one government or any one leader. You know, these machinations have been going on for a long time. And essentially, these politicians are powerless to resist what the imperialists want. And so that's why the attacks happened. When we will see more attacks, I don't know, but we think it's inevitability. And we are calling upon everyone to get involved and join a real movement to end war. And we've seen the response from social democrats. People say Labour can stop the war. Mm. They have to act tactically because of the position they're in. You know, they are politicians, they are bourgeois politicians in imperialist parties. Mm. Both the Tory party and the Labour party are imperialist parties. Mm. And the Labour party have called for a vote on whether to bomb Syria. They said that we should vote in Parliament whether we should attack Syria or not. And they do this on the basis that they're hoping that it will be defeated. We think that's not good enough. We say no vote for war, no to war, no to imperialist war in its entirety. And that's what we must say, that's the demands we must take to the public and get the public to take up. Not that we should have a legal war, not that the UN should bless the war, not that Parliament should rubber stamp it, but that we should not go to war at all. <laughs> And the spineless Social Democrats and the Stop the War Coalition 
who are essentially a rallying tool for the Labour Party, condemned the alleged chemical attack, which by all accounts so far has not happened. Um, the Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons was due to arrive in Douma on Saturday, which is part of the reason the attack was launched uh, on Friday before the inspectors could get there. Um, and Stop the War have condemned this alleged chemical attack. Stop the War have condemned Russian and Iranian involvement in the war because they take the bourgeois liberal pacifist line that all bombs are bad, all bullets are bad. No, we side with the oppressed in any war. We side with the anti-imperialist forces in any war. And Russia and Iran are supporting the Syrians in defeating the forces of reaction and the forces of imperialism in Syria. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to open it up for any questions or discussion. Yeah. Thank you.